PJ has brought out a narrative review about spasticity and what's changed with it and what should be further addressed. Now this is kind of interesting for those who work with spasticity. And what he's done is he's reviewed all the newest technologies, their roles and scales and measurements in spasticity. Uh, for those who treat this, you know how tricky it is. The problem for most of our colleagues who treat spastics is they don't really understand what they're dealing with. So if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And if you have power to prescribe medications, you can shoot a Botox, you can give them baclofen, you can do a pump. If you don't have the power to prescribe medications but you can do exercise, that's what you're going to do. Now, most people with spasticity eventually end up running out of money and don't get the right care in the long term, so they end up on programs that may not be the most optimal. What do you do for such people? They are going to continue living until they expire. They need quality of life, and spasticity really messes it up. So, this is interesting because what he's done is he's brought out articles and he's looked at tele-rehabilitation for follow-up. He's looked at EMG for follow-up. He's looked at different mechanical devices to provide torque, resistance, uh, stiffness of the muscles, etc., and how those could be used. He's shown out new scales that can be used to measure spasticity and provide new angles. The more and more you get into spasticity, the more you realize it's not just one thing. There are so many different flavors to spasticity. There is a rheogenic, which is mostly in the muscle. There's uh, an internal, which is more from the anterior horn cell, where it's just intrinsic spasticity. There's dystonia layered on top of it. There's psychology layered on top of that. There's lack of selective monetary motor control on top of that, right? And how all these things mix together tells you what kind of patient you're dealing with and how you should be addressing it. Does it make a big difference in the long run? It's hard to say so far because not many people look into spasticity as deep as they could. They see a person's spasticity, they see a few options, they prescribe, and the rest is going to be some therapy or another. So this is a really important review and it's something worth going through.